right, uh, for those of you watching this video, this is for AVT 101 at SIU Aviation Technologies. And if you just happen to watch in on this, that's fine. But the purpose of this exercise is a basic weight and balance on a little bitty, nothing special airplane. So we're going to do a weight and balance on this 1966 Cessna 170, uh, 150 Foxtrot today. November 7767 Foxtrot, if you care to know. Um, and uh, we're going to go through the basic process. Over here we have the most important set of equipment that we're going to use, and this is a set of aviation scales. And uh, probably the most difficult part about weighing the aircraft is getting a hold of the scales that you need to use. And you'll see how these work in a little bit. I've got some other equipment over here standing at the ready. Um, I have a great big long straight edge that happens to go out 96 inches. You can get by without that one. I've got a tape measure. I've got a plumb bob. I have a level, I have a dipstick for the tanks, I've got an air chuck, and I have something to write with and some masking tape, and that should be everything that we need to do this task. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to go over the airplane and we need to strip everything out of the airplane that should not be in the empty airplane. And since this is a pre-1978 aircraft, this is going to have no oil except for undrainable oil included, and of course no fuel except for unusable fuel included in the weight and balance. Otherwise, it's pretty much going to be just as is. So if I slip over here, there's usually lots of stuff inside the plane that don't, shouldn't go into the empty weight and balance. We'll start with the headset. That's going to have to come out. And there's some other stuff in the back of the plane that we're also going to grab out of the plane. Okay. Things in the back of the seat. Those are not part of the empty weight of the aircraft. The extra two quarts of oil, that's not part of the empty weight of the aircraft. The foggles and the Kleenex, while maybe important, not part of the empty weight of the aircraft. And the other place we're probably going to find things that shouldn't be in the aircraft is in the glove compartment. All right, I look things over and it looks like we've pretty well got to everything that is in the aircraft that isn't part of the empty weight of the aircraft. I'll set all of that aside and then we need to begin figuring out what else is on this aircraft. Now, normally, if you look at the manual, the manual says to drain all the fuel out of the uh, aircraft before we work with it. We're not going to do that because I'm not that concerned about an exact number. This is just for a school project, and we're just going to dip the tanks and we'll mathematically adjust. The same is true when it comes to the engine. We're going to use whatever the engine indicated amount of oil is, and we're going to remove that for our weight and balance. So uh, let's start by dipping our tanks. Four gallons of usable fuel in this. So that gives me six and five six gallons of usable fuel. And the reason I'm keeping it to the nearest sixth is that's, of course, to the nearest pound. So that's 36 plus five is 41 pounds of fuel that need to come off of this aircraft. Now we need to know how much oil is going to come off of the aircraft. We're going to go ahead and dip the oil. And we have five quarts of oil on this aircraft. So 41 pounds of fuel and five quarts of oil. And I'll do the math over there when I have a chance to look up all of that information. But five quarts of oil. So our weighing conditions on this particular aircraft our weighing conditions are going to be with 41 pounds of fuel and 5 quarts of oil in the aircraft. Now, we would look over this aircraft and if there was anything missing, we could actually go back and add that in when we're done. Like, let's say the ELT was out for service or maybe a radio is missing, but everything is on this aircraft so we don't have to put anything back on this aircraft. Good girl. That's why we're using the blue one instead of the yellow one that uh, is over in the corner. The next task we have to do is we have to level the aircraft. And to level the aircraft, if you read in the manual, you will find that on this model, this is a Foxtrot, the way we level the aircraft is we set a level on the rear tail cone. 
So come on back here. And there's our level set on the tail cone, and you're going to see that she's pretty nose heavy. The manual tells us that we can adjust by, a lot, by letting the air out of the tire, but I can tell you that uh, the way this thing is set up right now, we can let all the air out of the front tire, and we're never going to come level. Um, the manual neglects to add that you may want to let the air out of the nose strut, and that works a lot better. So I'm going to begin by deflating the nose strut. That's where the air is going to come off of the nose strut. Okay, we're going to take the cap off of the nose strut, and then we are going to use our air tool to remove the air from the nose strut. Watch what happens. It doesn't take a lot of air coming out, and we are now planted firmly on the nose strut. I'm going to put that cap back in place because that is part of the empty airplane. And we're going to put the door back in place. Wow. And now let's take a look at that level again. We're still not quite level, but we're a lot closer to level. So now, hopefully, we can reach that point of level when we work with our nose wheel. Was there no leveling? Uh, Probably gonna have to pull it forward to be able to get to the. Hmm? You're probably gonna have to pull it forward to get to the. Uh, Tell you what, um, if you could uh, set that down for a second, set the camera down, and lift the tail, that'll let me see where I need to get to. I don't even know which side. Mm -hmm. All right, come on, there we go. Show on the camera that it's level. Yeah, that it's coming into level. There it is. All right, we're ready. Yep. We're still so we're going to let the air out of the nose tire, and as you'll see, that will bring the level into position. How's that? Uh, just a tiny bit more if you can. Just a little more. That's level. That's all I got. Now, it's important that we start level because you'll notice as we let the air out of the nose strut, that changed the position of the wheel. And the same is true uh, it, as there's more load or less load, the rear wheels may move into different positions. And that's why Cessna doesn't tell us where these wheels are. They make us measure these wheels ourselves. And we've got to get these wheels in the right spot. So our next job is going to be to find where the wheels are in relationship to the datum. And to do that, we're going to use our plumb bob and our tape, and we're going to make markings on the floor. Time to get all of our measurements. We're going to start by measuring the datum, and the datum is the forward face of the firewall. So what I'm going to do here, so I'm going to hold the string up against the forward face of the firewall with my finger, and then I will slowly let the string play out until I know where level is. And once I know where level is, I'm actually going to put a little piece of tape down on the floor and we'll put, make our marking on there. It's going to take me a couple of, couple of passes here because normally I have somebody grab a hold of that for me and somebody hold the plumb bob and somebody make the mark. But there we go. And that right there 
is where our datum is. Right there. All right, now that tells me the datum on this side of the plane. I'm going to need the datum on the far side of the plane. But before I get up, I'm going to go ahead and mark where my nose wheel center is. Luckily, my nose wheel center can be located right from the center of this um, axle piece. So put that tape on the floor right there, and I'll find the center of my nose wheel. And it is right there on the floor. I'm going to go to the other side of the airplane and I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed the other side off camera because you don't need to watch all of these, right? I went ahead and I measured the other side of the datum and I measured the other side of that front nose wheel and I measured the other side of this side and now I'm doing the same thing over here. So now I've got six uh, marks on the floor. Those six marks are the outside edges of the mains, both sides of the datum, and both sides of the nose wheel. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wheel this airplane off those marks so that I actually have enough room to measure where everything is with relationship to the datum. And since the datum is the firewall, the nose wheel is going to be in front of the datum, that'll be a negative number. And the t uh, mains are going to be behind the datum, that'll be a positive number. And that'll let us figure out where the CG is on this airplane. Okay, now with that airplane out of the way, I can go ahead and mark everything down on the floor. And that makes everything a lot easier. So I'm going to start by marking my datum line. My datum line is just a straight line connecting the two points that made the datum. That was my datum. Now I need to find the center point of my front wheels. And the center point of my front wheels, I'm going to just start this at 40 inches. And over here, I get to 48 and 5 eighths, so that is five, 4 and 5 sixteenths, puts me right there for the center. Okay, and I'm just going to put this on NW for nose wheel. And now I have to do the exact same thing across the mains. I want the center of the two mains. And for the center of the two mains, there we are. And I have 89 inches between my two mains. Half of 89 inches is 44 and a half. And that is my MW, my main wheels. Okay. All right, so ready to get my measurements. And I can see that I'm at 10 and 3 eighths inches forward of the datum for my main wheel, 10.375. And it's important that I remember which 10.375 am I talking about. I'm talking about a forward of the datum 10.375. So that's a negative 10.375. Going back to the mains, I'm measuring and I find it is 48.375. 48.38. And, and which 48 and 3 eighths is it? It's the positive 48 and 3 eighths because I'm talking about going backwards of the data. So 48 and 3 eighths positive and 10 and 3 eighths negative gives me the stations that I'm going to use when I do my actual weighing. Now it's time to put the aircraft back and do the weighing.
This type of connection is called a cannon plug, and it has a barrel that spins and then a keyed barrel. So to put it in, I'm going to find the way that the barrel slips in, slide it in, and turn this part, not this part of the plug. Hold it up, turn it until it slides in, and twist the lock. All right, our power is on. And it says we have zero pounds on the scale right now, and that's because it's adjusted just the way it was the last time I weighed this airplane, which was for real about six months ago. All right, now Don, you may say you're making a mistake. You've got those little chalks on the scales, and don't you want to zero the scales with nothing on them? No, actually, I want to zero them with the chalks on them, because that means that their weight will actually be proper when the chalks are on there. If we take the chocks off, they'll actually show a slight negative weight. That's called tearing out the scale. And on old weights, we had to do that on a column. You'll see that in the, the paperwork we have to fill out. But with the new, weight, uh, new scales, we just take care of that weight that way, and we don't have to do as much math. So I've zeroed out each scale. When I turn on each scale, it shows zero pounds. All right. And if I turn on all three scales together, I have zero pounds which means that all of my scales are good. I'm gonna turn off all the weights, and the next thing I need to do is put the airplane onto the scales. So we're gonna come and pull the rear chalk from each scale. And then pull the aircraft onto there. That's a little bit difficult, oops. How about we put the proper one off? That's a little bit difficult to do without getting a lot of people to help. So we're going to have to put the camera down and I'm going to have to have my cameraman help and anybody else that I can snag passing by while we roll this airplane up. The easiest way to do this is to hold your foot in front of the scale, pull up by the strut. Hold your foot in front of the scale, pull up by the centered on the top. Hold your foot by the strut and pull up by the scale. Um, with the help of some passers-by, we're going to go ahead and lift this up. All right, now we're ready. Pull straight ahead. Come on, Nellie. Come on. It's a good thing she's just at 150 because that's about all I got. <laughs> all right, and if you could slide that chalk into the back. There it is. Thank you, sir. No problem. Good enough. It doesn't have to actually be all the way. Now she's back on the scales, but we got one more important thing we've got to do, because we had to put a little air in the tires uh, to roll her around, so we're going to have to level her again. The same process that you saw happen before. Uh, we're going to get it back level on top of the scales, and then finally we're going to be ready to weigh this girl. Um, I'm going to have to have you push the tail down again. I'll hold the, I'll just take the camera here for a second. That's all right. It won't hurt a thing. There it is. All right. Here's the camera. Hold it against the, hold it on the, the level again and tell me when it's done. Just say when you're ready. Uh, give me a second. Ready? Go. Alright, leveling the aircraft again. There we are. What you gotta do is yank that level off the aircraft because this is not part of the empty weight of the aircraft. Our left main comes in at 426. Our right main comes in at 457. And our nose wheel comes in at 285. It's bouncing back and forth. The last one we went up that was bouncing back and forth, this one will go down. We'll call it 284. Okay, NW 284. And that's what we need to actually do our math. All 
Alright, ready? All clear. So much easier going down than up. So here we are back again, and this time what we're going to do is fill out all the paperwork. And again, for those of you who aren't in the AVT 101 class that this video is intended for, you're going to see a lot of extra paperwork here because this is a class and there are several ways we're going to do the calculations and computations. Uh, this is probably not what I would use for the actual weighing form, again, because the point is to show lots of different techniques. Nevertheless, this makes some good education, right? The first question on our lab is, list any items on the aircraft that should not be included in the empty weight. Now, remember, we took out quite a few things out of this aircraft. We took out the headset, we took out the maps, we took out the extra oil, we took out all kinds of different things. But this is talking about things in the airplane that we're going to have to mathematically remove. And what we said on that was there was going to be 41 pounds of fuel and 9.375 pounds of oil that needed to be removed mathematically from our aircraft. Now, I'm going to give you a word of caution here because this is for a class. I'm not going to actually calculate this exactly with the numbers that we have here. So, make sure you get all these numbers down. These are the numbers from the video. We had 41 pounds of, extra, of usable fuel on board, 9.375 pounds of drainable oil on board, and our uh, nose wheel is always at minus 10.375 inches. Our mains were at 48.375 inches. We had 426 pounds on the right main, 457 pounds on the left main, and 284 pounds on the nose field. Those are the numbers that you need to use for this class. So if you're filling this out for a grade, those numbers are going to need to go in. But we're not going to use those numbers on my example because this is an example way. So we are going to get rid of those numbers, and we're going to make up our own numbers while we do this lab. Again. Those numbers I just erased, those are what you need. The ones that were in red, I'm gonna put these in blue. So, what's on this hypothetical airplane that I'm gonna do an example weighing on? On this hypothetical airplane, what needed to be removed was, let's go with 22 gallons of fuel. And it's not enough to know gallons of fuel. I also need to know where the gallons of fuel are. I'm going to look at the type certificate data sheet, and since we're doing a Foxtrot, I'm going to go ahead and check on the Foxtrot. It says fuel capacity goes at plus 42. Okay, so at plus 42 inches. All right, we need to know how much oil is coming off of this airplane, and let's go ahead and say that she's pulled all the way up to the top, and that is six quarts at minus, because it's in front of the data, uh, uh, datum, it's in front of the firewall, and when I take a look at over here, I am going to find oil capacity is at minus 13.5, and again, that's off the type certificate data sheet they measured for me, at 13.5 inches. Now, we're going to go ahead and say there's something else on this aircraft that we need to take off this aircraft. And since I'm just making this into a ridiculous example, let's say that somebody has put one of those wheel chalk things on there. And there's a, a locking wheel chalk because I parked it in a no parking zone. And the New York police came and clamped the wheel chalk on here. And I can't get the wheel chalk off. So we are going to say that there is a 20 pound chalk. And that 20 pound shock is at, and since we're making it up, that 20 pound shock sticks out in front uh, at minus 22 inches. Okay? So now on our example, it says list any items on the aircraft that should be included on the empty weight that aren't on the empty weight. Now, uh, in this case, in our aircraft, everything was on the aircraft, it was ready to go fly. But let's say that on the uh, one that we did the weight balance on, uh, maybe while it was parked in this bad neighborhood where it got wheel shocked, somebody stole the radio, and we are going to need to add a radio, which is 10.2 pounds at 
plus 18 inches. And I think that's enough for us to go ahead and do now. That gives us the example of how we can add things and subtract things to our weight balance. So this is our weight as weighed, our total amount of weight that we have, and now we're going to need to have to go in and use all that information. Now, I'm going to have a hard time remembering these, and there's also one other problem I've got over here. This is in gallons, and that's in quarts, and that's in pounds. But all of these need to be in pounds. So, of course, we know our 22 gallons become 192 pounds, okay? 192 pounds of fuel, okay, are coming off this aircraft. 192 pounds fuel at 42. This is just so I remember it. Six quarts, and by the way, a quart, a gallon of oil is seven and a half, so we're going to need seven and a half and then half of seven and a half to make our six quarts, or we can just take seven and a half times six divided by four to put that into quarts. Seven and a half times six divided by four gives me 11.25 pounds of oil. 11.25 pounds oil, and that is at minus 13.5. Okay, we've got our 20 pound low jack, our 20 pound chalk at minus 22, and we have our adding. Okay, so all of those are negatives because they're going to come off. But we are going to add a positive 10.2 pounds at 18 to put our radio back in. All right, so that's what we're going to have across here. And then, of course, we need to know what our numbers that we're going to use. And we are going to say that our nose wheel is at minus 12.2 inches, and it is... Uh, 316 pounds nose. Okay, our left main is at 52 inches and it is at 817 pounds and our right main is at 52 inches and it is at 793 pounds. Okay, this is our made up data that we're gonna to use to fill out our report. You, of course, are gonna be using the numbers that were the real numbers, but I gotta write these down here so I don't forget what they are. So across here, our scale reading on the left main over here was 817 pounds, 817. See if I can make that look a little better. Our tail is zero, so that makes it 817 pounds. Our right main was 793 pounds. Again, our tail is zero, so 793 pounds. Our nose wheel is 316 pounds. Our tail is zero, so it's 316 pounds. And now we need to know what the total weight is. I think if the total weight is not too hard, to just go ahead and total everything. 1,926 pounds. This is quite a bit bigger of an airplane than the little airplane that we weigh. Now, the next thing they ask us to do is use the CG and the formulas from the Weight and Balance Handbook. And if, for those of you who are just following along just for the heck of it, this is the weighing procedure from the Cessna 150 manual, and it tells us what all these different things are. And the R, it is equal to A, which is our total, okay, A equals the distance from the datum to the mains, okay, and the distance from the datum to the mains is 52 inches, so we're going to put 52 in here, 52 inches, and then we have N, and N was equal to the weight on the nose wheel, and our nose wheel has 316 pounds on it. And then that's times 
Um, N is times B, and B in our legend happens to be the total distance between the nose wheel and the mains. Now, the total distance between the nose wheel and the mains is 52 inches with an additional 12.2 inches, because this is out in front and those are back behind, so that is 64.2. 64.2. All right, and then that is divided by uh, W, which is the total weight, and that's our 1926 we just calculated. And now if we run that across on our calculator, and that spits out 41.466. We're gonna go 41.47. I'm just gonna keep one more. That's the number it gives us as our empty CG. But now, this is an unadjusted empty CG. We have not yet adjusted that CG for all of the things that we need to take off the airplane and the one thing we need to put back on the airplane. So that's why I typically don't use this type of formula. I typically just go straight over into the chart because we can do it all on the chart anyhow. Now, normally I would only do the chart once but in this particular case, I'm going to do the chart two times so that we can verify that that formula works the same way. So we're going to flip up and we're going to grab our weighing form. And I'm going to move right up to the start of that weighing form. No need for you to see any more of that than is necessary. And we're going to start filling out our weighing form. All right, this is a 150. It's actually a Foxtrot. Okay, it is serial number. You can look that up. It is November. 7767 Foxtrot. And this you can look up off of the uh, off of registry.faa.gov, do an in number search, search for 7767 Foxtrot, and you'll find the serial number. Or you can just walk out to the hangar and you can look on the data plate and you'll see the serial number on that. Our datum location is the front face of the firewall. Front face of firewall, as you have looked up already for this aircraft, our weighing conditions are with 192 pounds fuel, 11.25 pounds oil, and I guess I could say usable fuel and trainable oil to be a little more precise, 20 pounds chocks, and no 10.2 pound radium. Okay, the whole point of this line is so that people understand what we're doing down here. Location of the main weighing point is that negative, I'm gonna circle my little negative sign, 12.2 inches, and my main weighing points are at positive 52 inches. If you want to put point zero, you can. Our scale readings, this is just the same thing as what we did before. Our left main was 817, our right main was 793, our total, or our nose is 316, and I forgot what that total was already, but uh, you probably remember that. I'll calculate out that in a second. On the tear, I'm just going to put a line through that and a line through the net weight because there's zero. Now what I can't do is just leave them all blank. Okay, arm is 52, 52, and 12.2, but make sure that is a negative. Now I've got to calculate these numbers, and I can speed this up while I do it. Seven. 
huh, seems like I've seen that 41.47 before. That's the exact same number when I did it using the formula before. And it better be the exact same number because it's the same map, it's just arranged differently. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and calculate on the bottom of this aircraft. Our aircraft has weighed is 1926 with an arm of 41.47 and a moment of 7986.4.8. I'm just bringing this down, all right? Bringing the data down from here and we're going to adjust it for what should be on the plane and isn't and what is on the plane and shouldn't be. So, aircraft is weighed is my first item. My next one is remove usable fuel. And how much usable fuel do I have? I have 192 pounds of usable fuel. That's going to help. Okay, she is at 42 inches. Okay, but it's a minus 192 pounds because it's coming off. And then I have to remove drainable oil. Okay, and it's a minus 20 pounds. And it is at, nope, it's a minus 11.25 pounds. And where is it at? It's at minus 13.5. Two negatives are going to become a positive. Now we need to remove that low jack chalk. Okay. And it is minus 20 because it's coming off, and it is at minus 22 because it's out in front of the nose wheel. And then we need to add radio. And when we're done adding our radio, which is 10.2 pounds at 18 inches, we can go ahead and get all of those moments, and we should be able to keep this thing moving. Seven two five seven six point three is my total moment. Seven two five seven six point three. I need my total weight, and my total weight is going to be the one seven one two point nine. Let's go with one seven one two. Let's go with one seven one three. One seven one three. Rounding to the nearest whole number, 1713. Now I need to take that whole thing and I need 72576.3 divided by 1713. And that gives me 42.36. Let's go 42.4. All right. 40. 2.4. I'm going to write this down over here to help me remember it. 1713 and 42.4 inches. All right. Now it's time for us to erase all of this. Max allowable gross weight. And let's say that this particular aircraft is 2400. Of course, you can look this up on your type certificate data sheet. And if we're going with that Cessna 150 Foxtrot, I guarantee it's not 2,400. All right. Our total empty weight was 1,713. So if our empty weight was 1,713, we're allowed 2,400 pounds. We can take our 2,400 pounds that we're allowed minus the 1,713 that are already used by airplane, and we get 687 pounds of useful load. 687 pounds of useful load. And then compo uh, computed by, you have to put your John Hancock there, and then your A and P number, mine is 27821371, um, but you can put your A and P number there, you can make a number up because this is class, or you can use your SIU number, and the date happens to be, according to my Handy dandy date box, 8-23-2020. And that completes filling out our weight and balance report. Now, for those of you doing this for a lab, of course, you have to go back and you have to answer all the rest of the questions, but that should take care of it. 
Use those numbers, get everything in, and see what you have. By the way, one last thing we want to talk about is what happens when we do the adjustment. This is actually not a useful number because this is what the weight of our aircraft is as weight. This is what's the useful number because this is the true empty weight of the aircraft and the empty CG of the aircraft. So this is what my mechanic or my pilots are going to use from now on every time they fill out their weight and balance reports and checks to see whether they can go fly. And I need to sign off because this has been a long, long day. We'll see you tomorrow morning early. Thanks. <laughs>